Hi, this is the second lecture of frequency response of continuous timeline linear time invariant system. Last time we explained how to find the magnitude and the phase of the, the impulse response in frequency domain and we see the effect on the apple. Let's now say in this example that there is a system and the system has input and output and this is linear time invariant system and the input is x of t and the output is y of t and the response or impulse response h h of t and the relationship between the output and input is defined by the following differential equation dy by dt plus 2y equal to x of t plus dx by dt so this differential equation explains the relationship between the output and input at time domain it's required now to find find the system impulse response what does it mean the system uh, the system impulse response it means this guy h of t there are certain steps that you follow and you can get this in an easy way first step convert the differential equation from time domain to frequency domain using Fourier transform all right dy by dt so you know from property of the Fourier transform if you have x of t, or if you have y of t using Fourier transform it will be y of omega if you want to differentiate this uh, variable Fourier transform will tell you that you are going to multiply y of omega by j omega so when you differentiate a variable in time domain it the equivalent is to multiply its Fourier transform by j omega so dy by dt using Fourier transform will be equal j omega y of omega plus 2 y omega equal x of t will be x omega and the differentiation of x will be plus j omega x of omega second step try to collect like terms so you have y of omega is a common factor what's left here j omega and 2 so you can write it 2 plus j omega equal x of omega here as a common factor so what's left 1 plus j omega then you want to find h of omega what's h of omega it is the relationship between the input and output output over input the output is equal y omega and the input is equal x omega so if you use this equation to do that so y of omega so is equal 1 plus j omega divided by 2 plus j omega so that will be the impulse response but in frequency domain now the, I'm, I'm, i want to find the equivalent in time domain how you do that you should go back and look at the table of for year transform to see how they look like so always you'll find like i mean it has one plus some kind of one plus constant uh, or constant uh, j omega so it's like that so you your job now trying to do that one an easy way to do that let's just divide it you wanna so you will say like that you have the bottom here 2 plus j omega you wish that to have also 2 plus j omega but you have 1 plus j omega so what is the difference between both 2 plus j omega minus 1 minus j omega see i mean how how, how much did you add so you got 1 so what happened here you added 1 since you added 1 subtract the 1 so you got the same one on the top like this one why i'm doing that because i mean i wanna i wanna i wanna divide and get one so when you divide you divide it like that 
So you divide this by this is equal 1 minus 1 left over 2 plus g omega. So you have a formula which is close to the one you can see in the table of Fourier transform. Then you go now to the table and you look how can you find. Well, it's easy now because when you open the table, please when you review this video, just open the table of Fourier transform. You'll find one. This is the Fourier transform of delta of the impulse. And when you look at that, you will find in the table, this is like 1 over alpha plus j omega. If you have it in this form, you will find the equivalent is e to the power minus a t u t. Here, alpha is equal to 2. So you can write that's equal to e minus 2 t u t. See, it's easy. So start from here, this step, how you can reform or reshape this equation in a way that you can see it close to the one in having the table. So finally, now you can you can you can say that that the 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 h the impulse response h of t the last thing it's equal delta of t minus e to the power minus two t u t. That's the required impulse response in time domain so i hope that was easy let's continue let's continue because we want to get advantage of uh, of uh, the this transfer function and see what can you do what is the value of transfer function well if you know the transfer function in time domain and frequency domain you can find the response to any input let's say the same example that we have here that you know the input and let's assume that the input here is equal to unit step. It means it look like that. And equal one with time. The question is, what's the output? Well, of course, I mean, you have H of T and you got U of T, the, the step, because you know what's U of T, the unit step is equal to one when T greater than or equal zero and zero uh, elsewhere but again if you are going to use in time domain it will be kind of hard and you are going to do convolution and integration and it's like I mean, cumbersome so what should you do take advantage it's a linear time in various system and you so here all right so it means that y of omega is equal h of omega times the input x of omega h of omega we had it before we got it before it's equal 1 plus j omega divided by 2 plus j omega so you have 1 plus j omega divided by 2 plus j omega that's impulse response in frequency domain and the input now is unit step well you got to know the unit step uh the transformation in in, in the table so what's the unit step well the unit step if you look at the table uh unit step Fourier transform that's equal to uh, pi delta omega plus one over j omega. So I go ahead and then this one I plug it there in the equation. Just let's I mean frame this to know that this we got it from the table. We didn't do anything, just we got it. So um, I multiply h of omega by x and x unit step. So I multiply it by pi delta of omega plus one over j of omega now the output i just multiply multiply this guy by the first and then by the second so by the first i have uh, pi delta omega one plus j omega divided by two plus j omega that's the first and the second 1 plus j omega divided by 2 plus j omega times 1 over j omega. All right, let's find now the first guy. How can we find the first one here? You got to know the properties of impulse. When you are multiplying anything by delta, let me give you, let me just write the formula, you know, and this is also in the handout, you know, of module th uh, 3, I believe, yes. So, uh, if you have a function t minus alpha and you multiply it by delta of t minus alpha, the same angle, 
and that is equal to the function itself at alpha multiplied by delta t minus alpha that's property of impulse response if you're multiplying any function by the delta and they are shifted at the same the same direction so it's equal to the function when t equal to alpha multiplied by delta t, alpha, t minus alpha all right so just let's do that where in this one that's the function one plus j that's considered this one that's your f of t you tell me there is no alpha it means zero alpha zero so i will write f of omega that you have here uh, it's one plus j omega divided by two plus j omega and it's multiplied by delta omega minus zero so you substitute by omega equals zero in this case you will have one half so the whole thing here will be equal pi delta omega half so now i mean just let me write the first part pi delta omega times one plus j omega divided by two plus j omega that will be equal to pi over two because you have pi here now i will go for the second part the second part uh, oh, I'm sorry, it has to have this one, it has to be multiplied by delta omega, according to the formula here. Now, the second part here, 1 plus j omega divided by 2 plus j omega, j omega. So, the second part, 1 plus j omega, in the top, in the bottom, j omega, 2 plus j omega. Okay, once you see something like that, like you have two factors in the denominator, you just go ahead and do partial fraction. Uh, let me remind you. I'll just I'll, I'll just show you how you start, and then you can you do like exercise. You have one denominator equal j omega, and the second one is equal to two plus j omega, and all are simple roots because here the root j omega is equal zero, and here I mean the j omega is equal minus two. So let's both take k one, k two to find the constant k one and k two, and then try. To find k1 and k2 using partial fraction as we did in, in, in previous lecture when you do that i did that and you should you should do it by yourself to exercise i found that k1 is equal one half and k2 is equal to one half so now this term it can be simplified as one half divided by j omega plus k2 one half divided by two plus j omega this is the, the one that just I did, partial fraction. J omega, 2 plus J omega. All right. So what the second step? Once you do that, you go to the uh, table of uh, Fourier transform to find, I mean, which one is equivalent to what? Well, but I mean, before you do that, don't forget that you have another term here. So you add everything. So now you're... The output y of omega equal, I'm going to add all terms together. The first one, pi over 2 times delta omega. Pi over 2 times delta omega. And this is the second term, plus 1 half 1 over j omega. Plus 1 half 1 over 2 j omega. And then that's what is supposed to find its inverse. Let me just frame it here. So that's, I mean, my objective now, how to find the inverse of this guy. Well, I, I, I went to the table for your transform and I found there are two entries there. They are really very helpful. I find that the U of T, it gives pi delta omega plus one over J omega. Why I looked at that table is specific at U of T because I'm looking actually at F W and I know that they have terms like that. So and I found very similar. This is good. For this guy, I found something here. I found if you if it's equal one, we did that in the previous problem. A plus J omega. I found that will be corresponding E minus A T U T. So I was happy to find these two entries. So let's just adapt the first two terms to match this one. I take one half as a common factor. So if you have one half as a common factor, so I will write the output in frequency domain. I take one half. So what's left? Pi delta of omega plus 
1 over j omega that's good so it will look like that the second one it's already it's ready 1 half 1 over 2 plus j omega now I will just apply the inverse using the table so 1 half and this will be equal to u of t plus 1 half and that will be equal to e to the power of minus 2 t u t then you can take u t as a common factor and we have one half here you have one plus e minus 2 t so that will be your output and you can sketch it if you like using MATLAB so it was easy that I hope that uh, uh, it was easy and you understood and thank you